Hello friends and welcome to another quick review series. In this one I'm going to talk all about linear inequalities. So I designed this review series to help you review for maybe something like a math placement exam. So initially I designed it for the Alex placement exam, but honestly this is a quick review in case you forgot this topic for any particular class that you're reviewing for. So sometimes I refer to Alex and you could ignore that if I do. So first of all with linear inequalities, first thing we've got to review are just the symbols of note. So with inequalities you have these four symbols less than, less than or equal to, so it's got that little bar, greater than, and greater than or equal to, so it's got that bar. So the way that I remember these symbols is that the less than symbol, it kind of looks like a messed up L. So that's kind of how I remember all of this. Okay, so with that in mind, let's talk about first with linear inequalities. First thing we've got to talk about is number lines and interval notation, because depending on what system you're working with or whatever you're doing, th this is a really common thing that comes up with linear inequalities. Okay, so first thing I want to mention here is that when it comes to number lines, um, there is inconsistencies with notation. So I can tell you that Alex uses closed and open dots, but other systems or other instructors might use rounded brackets or closed brackets. So I will show you how to use both of these sets of notation, but I also just want to mention that these are interchangeable. They, they are just, it doesn't matter which one you use really. Okay, so let's talk about how to make a number line that represents x is greater than or equal to three. So this is a really common thing to be asked. Okay, so what you're gonna do is you're gonna set up a number line and you're gonna center it at whatever number you need. So in this case, I'm gonna center it at three. And I am gonna draw uh, just two other numbers, so one on the left and one on the right of whatever my center number is. And then you just have to remember, so this doesn't look like an L, right? This is, so this has to be the greater than. So this is X is greater than or equal to three. So where are the numbers greater than three? On the left or on the right? Well, the numbers are greater than three going this way. So this is gonna be our number line. Okay. So the other thing with the number line though is at the three, you need to be able to represent what sign was put here. And so going back to this, the shorthand notation here is, so we either use an open dot or a rounded bracket for less than or greater than. So if it doesn't have the equal to on it, if it has the equal to on it, you can think of that as it is including this number. And so we use a closed dot or a square bracket. So in this case, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna make this in this, this blue color just so you can kind of really clearly see it, I hope. So this is a or this is a, an, a greater than or equal to, so I'm gonna put a closed dot right here. So you can think of the closed dot or the square brackets. Yeah, this really means include that number. When it's rounded or when it's an open circle, it means include everything up to that number. And I think I'll just leave this up here for a second. Um, Okay, so what I wanna do now is I wanna just contrast this to the next, the next one, x is less than five. So let's do the same thing. Oops, wrong color. All right, so I have negative five. Now with negative numbers, remember when I go this way, this will be negative four and this will be negative six, so just keep that straight. So where do the numbers get less than negative five? That would be anything this way, so. I'm gonna go this way. And okay, so now I have a less than symbol. So since it's a less than symbol, I don't wanna include the five, so I'm gonna use one of these pieces of notation. Now, I could use an open dot here, but just to mention the other notation, and I'll just use it here, because like I said, it doesn't really matter. What you would do is you would have an open bracket and then you have the bracket always opening in the direction that you've, you've um, like colored the line in. Okay, cool. So I've got two number lines here. So now I can also discuss my interval notation. So when you want to represent an answer on a number line in interval notation, there's two things you really want to know about the number line. One, we read interval notation like a book, so we read it from left to right. So I'll show you how that works in a second, but you wanna just stay oriented with this. And then the other thing that is really important is that you use um, rounded brackets and square brackets. So that's why a lot of people use these with number lines because it transfers over to interval notation. Okay, so coming back here. So looking at this, so I'm reading from left to right, so nothing, 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 nothing. I start at three. 
So since three is included, it's still that same idea. So these brackets here still apply. So I'm starting at three. So I have three with a rounded bracket. And then I'm just continuing on this way for forever. So this direction is the positive infinity direction. And by the way, just to, to maybe make this clear, this direction is the negative infinity direction. Now typically when we talk about the positive infinity direction, we don't actually include the plus sign. I just wanted to make it really clear. So I'm just gonna write infinity there. So if the end of your line is colored in, that means that you've gone to the infinity direction. So this would be how your interval notation looks. Close bracket from three to infinity. Now the other thing that I wanna mention here is one more point to add to this. Infinity and negative infinity, these are not numbers, these are concepts. So these always use rounded brackets, okay? So we're gonna add that to our list. So it's not something that you have to think about, but infinity is not a number. And so since it's not a number, boom, we cannot use this, this square bracket. It wouldn't make sense. The idea, right, is that if you told me the largest number that you could think of, I would just add one to it, right? And then it would just keep going. So that's kind of the, the fun philosophical nature of, of infinity. So anyway, so there would be my interval notation in that case versus here. So now I'm starting at this side, remember, is this is my negative infinity side. So I'm starting at negative infinity and then I'm continuing on until I get to negative five. And negative five is not included, so it gets a round bracket. So I think this is actually a really good argument for why you should use square and rounded brackets. This is actually my preference on the number line because it's one less thing to remember. But like I said, Alex, other systems tend to use, um, I believe, closed and round brackets, but they could always change too. So if you're watching this video at a later point in time, they can always make an update and change what that is. So just FYI, anything's possible. Okay, so I have another one here for you. I want you just to do this, this x is less than or equal to zero. So go ahead and just set up the number line and the interval notation. Just do it totally on your own just to make sure that you've got this and then hit play when you're ready. Okay, so now I'm gonna set up my number line. So here's zero, here's negative one, one. So this is less than or equal to. So this direction is gonna be my less than or equal to, and I will just stay consistent with Alex here for a moment. So zero is gonna be included, so I'm just gonna make this nice, rounded, closed dot here. Now, for the interval notation, this is starting at negative infinity. So I'm gonna start at negative infinity, and I'm gonna to go to zero. Zero is included, so it gets a square bracket. Okay, so if you're feeling good on that, um, so the reason why we do all of this is that it's totally possible that at any point you could be asked to represent an answer in these other formats. So I think it's important just to start there, just to, to have a heads up for that. Okay, so now let's talk about this other case. So this is now two numbers on each side of X. So I always ask people, what do you actually think that this says? And I, I think actually you'll, you'll remember this better if you pause and just write down, what do you think this actually means? Um, even if you get it wrong, that's fine, but I think you'll remember this better if you take a second to think about it on your own before I tell you. So pause here, write down what you think it is. Okay, so a lot of times when I talk about this in class, people say, it says that negative two is less than or equal to X, which is less than four. That is not what it means, right? <laughs> so like, what does it mean? So all this is saying, is that x is literally between negative two and four. That's it. And so sometimes when people see this, they're like, oh, it's gotta be this crazy number line, whatever. It, like, if you just think of this as x is between negative two and four, you can automatically, like, or pretty quickly visualize what the number line has to look like, right? So I need to mark both of those numbers. There's negative two, negative four. How would you represent that x is between them? Just shade in between. Now, the only other thing that we need to do here, right, is we need to represent that negative two is included and four is not. And then how would you do the interval notation for this? Well, we read from left to right. This starts at negative two and negative two is included. And then we continue on to four and four is not included. So it gets a rounded bracket. Okay, so now that we've reviewed that first part, that's usually pretty important for inequalities. We're gonna talk about solving inequalities. Now I would recommend that for this, you should already be okay with solving linear equations. 
So I had a whole video where I talked about techniques for this and I'm just going to be relying on those in this video. So things like x plus 3 equals 6, but also things like having fractions in an equation or decimals in an equation. So if you're okay on this, that's great. If you need a refresher on these, I'd recommend that you check out my solving linear equations video because I just give you some tips on how to solve this. And I'm just going to kind of roll with that in this video to keep this video shorter. So for the most part, solving inequalities is very similar to just solving equalities. But the key thing with this comes down to multiplying or dividing by a negative number. So when you multiply or divide by a negative number, you must flip the direction of the inequality. That is like really the key thing to remember. So a lot of times when you're doing these, it's not a big deal. So for instance, 3x is greater than 12. So we don't want to, so I, I want to mention this because I see students do this a lot. A lot of times somebody will rewrite this and then solve this. So don't even introduce the equality sign into this because it, very often what happens is I, I see someone start this and they forget to, that it was an inequality and then they never switch it back. So just pretend this is an equal sign. So if this were 3x, this is 3x is greater than 12. If I want to get 12 by, or, yeah. if I want to get x by itself, what would I do? I would just divide by 3. And in this case, I'm dividing by a positive number. So all that happens is that this is going to be x is greater than, oh my god. My coffee. My coffee needs to kick in, guys. Okay, a x is greater than 4, and that would be your solution. And then as far as, like, what else do you do with this? So it kind of depends. Um, sometimes this is fine. Sometimes you are asked to put this on the number line, so represent your solution in a number line. That's why we just did all that. So I could go ahead and I'll, I'll do a round bracket just to mix it up. So I could do that, or you could be asked to do this in interval notation. So Either one of these answer formats is usually fair game. And so it just depends on the situation that you're in. So you're just going to want to clarify that. Okay. So this part is kind of easy peasy. B is going to show you kind of that one thing you have to watch out for when you've got an inequality. So I've got negative five X is less than or equal to 15. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to divide both sides by negative five. But since I am dividing by a negative number, I have to flip the direction of the inequality. So this is going to turn into x is greater than or equal to negative 3. So this is kind of the big thing that you want to watch out for. It's whether you multiply or divide specifically by a negative number. Now, if you want to take a second to represent this on a number line in an interval notation just to make sure you've got it, I think that would be a good idea. So here's my negative 3. I'll do a closed dot. I'm going to go this way. And so this will be an in interval notation, negative three to infinity. Okay, so by the way, I do offer free PDFs of the notes on this video. So my notes include all the problems that I'm going through right now. So in general, I think you're more likely to remember this material if you actually like force yourself to write it down. So if you're interested in the free PDF, just go to divideandconquermath.com and then you can go to the review section. Just look for the topic name and you'll, you'll find it and it's all free. Okay, so let's keep going. So now I've got 3x is less than or equal to negative 18. So in this case, I'm going to divide both sides by 3. Now, this is the key. Am I dividing by a negative number? No, I'm not. I'm dividing by 3. Sometimes what can happen is people will see a negative number and then want to flip the inequality, so you don't do that. It's only when you're actually dividing by this number here has to be negative. It is not negative. So this is going to be x is less than or equal to negative 6. And just to keep the video shorter, I'm going to omit the, the number line for now. Okay, so now really what we're going to talk about is we're going to just talk about now slightly more complicated examples of this. So with d here, so it's still the same goal. I want to get x by itself, and really I'm going to use all the same techniques that I would have from a linear equation. So to get x by itself, the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to add 5 to both sides, so I have negative 2x now is greater than or equal to 12, and then I'll divide both sides by negative 2. But since I'm dividing by negative 2, I know that I need to flip the direction of the inequality. Okay, so I have two more here for you just to make sure that you've kind of got the basics down. So if you want to pause the video just to make sure you're solid on this, I think that would be a great idea. 
Hit play when you're ready. You don't have to draw the number line for these, just, just plow through them. Okay, so for this one, so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to add 12 to each side. So now I have four X is greater than 12. Divide both sides by four, so I'm dividing by a positive number. So this will be X is greater than three. And for this next one, so I'm gonna start by subtracting five from each side. So now I have negative X is less than or equal to negative three. So now you could multiply by negative one or you could divide by negative one. It's kind of like, it, it doesn't matter which one you choose. So, but I, I, in either case, whether I multiply or divide, I am doing so by a negative number. And so I do have to flip the direction of the inequality. So I'm gonna have X is greater than or equal to three. Okay, so from here on out, I am just gonna keep working through different levels of difficulty of inequality problems. So that's, that's all the rest of this video will be. And so, you know, you can look through the notes to see if there's anything interesting that you wanna go through, but I'm just gonna start kind of going through problems. So this is a great review, by the way, if you are still a little rusty on your linear equations, or linear, the, <laughs> your linear equations. Okay, so uh, for this one, so now I've got X's on both sides and numbers on both sides. So what I need to do is I need to bring the X's over to one side, just like we did for equations. And then I need to bring the numbers over to the other side. So I'm gonna subtract off the five. So this is gonna be four X is less than or equal to negative 14. And so then I'm gonna divide both sides by positive four. So since I divided by a positive number, this will equal, so I can divide um, 14 and four by two. So this will be X is less than or equal to negative seven over two. Okay, so moving on to D here. So now this is actually a, a very good one. So here's kind of a weird thing that can happen sometimes. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm just gonna solve this one for X. So I add eight to both sides. And so this is gonna be um, 44 is greater than or equal to four X. Okay, so I'm gonna divide both sides by four. And I have now that 11 is greater than or equal to X. So here's the one thing with this. What if I asked you to put this on the number line or an interval notation? So I actually want to challenge you to just make sure that you do that properly. So I want you to pause here, think about it for a second, write down your answer and then hit play. Okay, so one thing that can happen sometimes is we get tunnel vision looking at this. The X is on the different side this time. That's kind of what's funny about this. So if I set this up, oops, uh, if I were to set this up, here's 11, 12, here's 10. So now I need 11 to be greater than or equal to X. So for some people, this can kind of mess with their brain a little bit. And if this messes with your brain, what you can do is you can just flip the direction of the inequality. So the main thing is, is that you want that mouth. I always think of this, I, I know this is so silly, but I always think of this as like being a mouth. So the mouth has to still be chomping on the same part. So this is chomping on the 11. So if I set this up, X and 11, the equivalent inequality would be that X is less than or equal to 11. So I think that this is just easier to wrap my brain around than this. And, and so now that I see it like this, I can see, oh, that should be these values here with the closed dot. So, um, and, and then the interval notation would be negative infinity to 11 inclusive. So just something to keep in mind is that if your X is not on the right side, you can always flip it. Okay, so I have three more like this, and then we're gonna do a couple of other types of inequalities. So here I have all this stuff that I have to distribute. So just like I would with a linear equation, I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna start by distributing, collecting my like terms, all that good stuff. So again, I would strongly recommend that you pause and try each one of these, but I'm just gonna go ahead and, and, and attack this. So I'm gonna start by distributing. So this is gonna be two X plus six minus X plus one is greater than eight minus X minus nine. Cool. And so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna collect my like terms. So on this side, I have two X minus X, so that's X. And then the six plus one is a seven. And then on this side, so I have eight minus nine. So this will be negative one minus X. So now I gotta get everything over to one side. So I'm gonna add the X's over to this side. And 
then I will subtract off the seven. So I have two X now is greater than negative eight. So two X is greater than negative eight. So I'll divide both sides by two, which is a positive number. So this will be X now is uh, greater than negative four. Okay, and so just to keep things fun, so I wanted to throw in a, a fraction problem because we did a bunch of these with linear inequalities. So when you have a bunch of fractions in an inequality, just like you would with an equation, we actually don't want to deal with the fractions. That's not fun. Oops, um, we don't want to deal with the fractions. So instead what we're going to do is we're going to find the LCD of all fractions. And I talked about this technique at length in my equations video. So if you want to get a full breakdown of that, I strongly recommend you check that out. But just to quickly kind of graze over the technique. Um, so my LCD for all my fractions would be four. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply each one of these parts by four. So I'll show you what that looks like. Okay, so I've taken this equation and I've taken each part of it. So this one fourth X, I've multiplied it by four. This five halves, it has been multiplied by four. The one half X was multiplied by four, but you can't just do the fractions. You have to do it to the entirety of your equation. So every term. So also the one has to be multiplied by four. And now I'm just going to work this out. So what is four times one fourth? That's just one. So this first part here will just become X. What is four times five halves? Well, four times five halves would be 20 over X, or I could just write this as minus 10. Four times one half is two, and then four times one is four. So here's what I'm left with. And this is, this is much better, right, than what we were dealing with before. And now I can just kind of plow ahead with this. So I'm gonna subtract off the two X. I'm gonna do two steps at once this time. So um, this is gonna become negative X is less than or equal to six. And now I can divide everything by negative one. So I have X is greater than or equal to negative six for this one. Okay, so we're also gonna do just one of these with decimals. So the trick with decimals, so I've got 6.1 is less than or equal to negative 0.55X plus 6.1. So the trick with decimals is that you count the maximum number of decimal spots that you have. So in this case, two, this has two decimal spots. So I wanna move all of these decimals over two. So I'm gonna move this over one, two. I'm gonna move this over one, two, and I'm gonna move this over one, two. And if you have an empty spot, then you just fill it with a zero. So this problem will turn into 610 is less than negative 55 X plus 610. And this one's almost kind of silly. Um, you may have kind of figured out without needing to move the decimals, but I just wanted to refresh how to do that technique. So you can see that after I subtract off the 610, I have zero is less than or equal to negative 55 X. So if I were to actually divide that out, so zero divided by anything is just zero. So this is going to be zero is less than or equal to X. Okay. And so now I want to just talk about these three part inequalities one more time. So I've got just a couple of examples of this and then we'll be done. So, um, for this one, I've got negative four now is less than or equal to two X, which is less than eight. So what I want you to do is I want you to pretend that this half of the equation is not here right now. And so just if this were just two X is less than eight, how would I solve for X? I would want to divide by two. And so what you're going to do is now you're just going to do that for all sides. So you just figure out what is it that you have to do to solve for X. And then you just do that thing to all sides to keep everything balanced. So this is going to become negative two is less than or equal to X, which is less than four. So that's all you have to do with three part inequalities. So if I were to change this to say this inequality, six is less than or equal to four X minus two is less than 14. So it's still the same principle. I am just focused in this part here. I'm getting the X by itself. So first I'm going to add the two, but I'm going to add it to all sides. Oops. And this should be eight. And then I'll divide all sides by four to get two is less than or equal to X is less than is less than four. 
Okay, so now that I've shown you two, I want you to try one on your own. Let's just make sure that you're good on this. So pause the video here. Remember, math is not a spectator sport. You'll learn best if you actually do it. Give it a try, hit play when you're ready. Okay, so I'm gonna start by subtracting the three from all sides so that I have negative five is less than five X, which is less than or equal to 10. And then I can divide all sides by five to get negative one is less than X, which is less than or equal to two. Cool. All right, and I have one more here. So this one has a little bit of a plot twist. So it's a little trickier. Again, strongly recommend you pause, make sure you don't miss that plot twist. I'm not gonna tell you what it is. Hit play when you're ready. Okay, so I will start. I will go ahead and subtract the five from all sides. So I have negative eight is less than or equal to negative two X, which is less than four. Now, I'm gonna divide everything by negative two. And in dividing everything by negative two, what else has to happen? I have to flip the direction of these inequalities. So it looks a little funky now. But remember, what if you wanted to rewrite this so that it didn't look so funky? You just have to have the mouth of the inequality opening in the right way. So if I wanted to rewrite this, I could write here's negative two, x, and four. Okay, so between the negative two and the x, the mouth of the inequality is opening towards the x, and between the x and the four, the mouth of the inequality is opening towards the four. So that would be the equivalent way to write that, and I just find this, like, whenever this happens to me, I just have a tendency to rewrite it like this, because this just makes more sense in my brain. Okay, so you can't master math by watching a ton of YouTube videos. You do have to practice it, but hey, I have a ton of practice if you want to practice this more. So all of my review videos comes with additional practice problems. So you can get a free PDF of problems with an answer key. And I also have video solutions showing you how to work any of the problems if you're not sure. So if there was something from this video that you wanna practice a little bit more, I'd say check out the additional practice problems. So again, just go to dividingconquermath.com and go to the review section and you'll find everything there for free. And by the way, my review series has many other topics in it. Each topic includes a refresher video like what you just watched and then the practice problems with the answer key and the worked out solutions video. So all of this is again at dividingconquermath.com. Just go to the review section, it's all free. And hey, if you like this video, I would love it if you hit that like button or even better, the subscribe button. And I will talk to you guys in another video, I hope. Bye.